So this used to be old comics, but with a new section getting built. So this is set up for two, three foot wide glass cabinets per section, but they're about three, three weeks back on the back order. So we figured this way we'll just put more of the masters over here because it's so crowded on this side. And then once it's time, we'll move those glass cabinets. We'll finish the glass cabinets. Then all this will go over there and we'll keep most of it together. And the glass cabinets will have what in them? It's going to be 100% Lego, uh, retired Lego, some newer Lego, um, some of the more expensive sets, and then thousands of loose, pre-built, 100% complete sets. We probably have around four or 500 sets complete at home. We just can't, there's nowhere to put them. You have to put them in glass because too many people pull pieces. Yeah. Don't mind dirty me. I was painting. Note to self, don't paint in the wind. Don't paint in the wind. What you working on there, Spring? Uh, reaction figures. I see you have a uh, certain place set there next to you. It's Ghostbusters. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're with it. We're piecing it together. Oh, so you're not pricing that. That just yeah. happens to be sitting there. Yes. That is just for decoration. There's a little confusion <laughs> in the store today. All this reorganization. How are you handling all this? Because mm. stuff is everywhere. Uh, that's it's typical. They're always changing something. Always, you know, fixing something up. Making it bigger and better around here. So... It's, it's common practice to have everything, you know, all over the place so that we can put it back together and make it better. Now, if, the, if there was a day where there was no chaos, you would know something's wrong then? Is that the... I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nikki, when you start with a store that specializes in toys, and now you have to add comics to that, how much of a... Like how much of the is the how much effort goes into trying to figure out? Okay, now we have to know this too on top of the toys. As Alan always says, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know a little bit about everything. So for us, we try to make it as simple as possible. And like, if someone were to come in and say, "Hey, I need Trencher issue number three, we would go to the comics and we would go to letter T. They're um, all done by the first three letters, so we go to like TRE and then look for issue three if we have it. And that's the easiest way we, for us, since we're not comic collectors, to figure out if we have the book or not. Gotcha. So you, you don't you don't have to be the comic expert that I remember from the '90s where we'd be in the store there talking about issue this and issue that. Yeah, and... No, that's why anytime someone asks like our sales team. Do you guys have this? If I have no idea what it is, I'll ask the staff. If they don't, then, hey, do you have a picture of it? Because I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> do you think it's even possible with a store this size and the amount of things that you carry to, like, know everything? No, you can't know everything. Not at all. And that's, why, and that's why we have a staff chat. And anytime a customer asks a question, if we're not sure, because, like, we're always posting pictures. But if you're not looking at those pictures that we're posting every day... You don't know. So that's why I'm always like, hey guys, do we have this? And then they'll be like, yeah, it's in this section. And then we'll take the customer there. So we don't ever want to tell a customer no, and then we do have it. Alan will be angry at us. Hmm. <laughs> I like those surprises. Yeah, uh-huh. Alan, how often are you angry? <gasps> Every day. <laughs> oh, 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 whoops. So the, uh, the stuff you're putting up here, you said you got all this from one guy. Yeah, uh... There was a gentleman that passed who was going to open up a science fiction store, and um, when they called, we thought it was just like, everyone exaggerates. It, 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 it's, it's human nature. Oh, man, I got a thousand of those. You got ten, right? So when the guy was like, yeah, we have like over 40,000 items, we, you know, and we need them going in like two weeks. We want to put the house on the market, and the family was from far away. It was just a whole ordeal. So when we went out there, I'm like, oh, my God. They really have 40 some thousand. And then they, dude, they had it all on the spreadsheet already. Dude. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. So. At least knew, that made it easy. Oh, it did, man. You knew right away. Just, you know, you could look it up. I mean, cases. I mean, don't get me wrong. Star Trek Buffy. It was like 912 ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a little over, a little under a thousand Christmas ornaments. Wow. So. But at the same time, guess what? 
They don't expire. Nope. So. Oddly enough, I happen to know who this guy was. I'm not going to say yeah. his name or anything, but I happen to know who he was. And yeah, I didn't know him personally. I, I never met him or anything. I did. He was a nice guy. Yeah, that's what everyone said. Everyone said he was very, very nice. Had to be. Oh, there it is. He had Trek toys, and the Trek people are very nice. I can say that I've had more better experiences with Trek collectors than I have with Motu collectors. Yeah, I was just, uh, that was a really good conversation the other day with, uh, with uh, yesterday, technically, because we were doing this, we are talking about, I don't, I don't know when collecting became a competition. Yeah, how do you feel about the gatekeeping that seems to be out there in the, in the community these days? Dude, everyone's money is valued to them differently, right? So, like, if I see a $1,000 thing and I want to buy it, Sure, no problem. If I had that thousand dollars, it's expendable. Sure, but then if a thousand dollars is like way over budget, that doesn't mean that your collection's not as cool. You know what I mean? It just means that you're on a different budget than I am. Nikki Wackel, you plug that damn vacuum back in. I had to finish vacuuming. Can you can you unplug it without uh, it being? How do? Uh, <sighs> you gotta get up oh there. boy. You're talking about the because I started this video a little late after I was asking a question personally, but this is interesting information. Yeah, you're talking about starting the website, which we've mentioned on a previous video, and you're saying that you're delayed and you're behind, and you were mentioning that your rhyme and reason behind how you're doing this is that you have to make sure when you launch you've got enough on there. So that so that you don't alienate people is that what you're say, basically yeah. saying? We, we had it. We, we I'm thousands of dollars in on a website already. Um, the lady's incredible to work with. I can't wait to share her with a lot of other people. I mean, she, she I, nothing but great man, willing to help every step of the way. Because in all reality, I'm ignorant to websites. I don't know enough. I don't, and that's why we paid someone to do it. Sure. And um, with everything with the store, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to be nice. I wanted to be professional wanted to be good I couldn't even use eternityofdreams.com um, someone bought it and then we tried to broker it to buy it out and he wouldn't sell it so uh, picking and choosing different titles and names to, to do was one thing but she had reached out to Nikki and said hey you know when are we gonna launch this thing because it's been a few months and I was like hey, I'm not launching that website until there's 500 items on it and right now it's gonna be 500 items that are in package or you know whatever it's not gonna be all my vintage stuff yet because it, when you take a case and I cut the case open, she can just do quantity four and it's perfect. But when you do vintage, you have to do every single picture and it, t it, it takes her a lot of time and I need Nikki a lot of time too in what I'm doing. So when I was explaining to the lady about the website, I was like, look, you can have the best website in the entire world, right? Let's act like it's a car lot. I just got a brand new car lot. Let's do my grand opening this week, knowing I've only got six cars. But next month, my order comes in and I have 30 cars. What will happen is that grand opening or that announcement day, you'll have all these people come to the site. They're going to see six items and never come to my site again. Yeah. It's just it's just what will happen. I, I, I would do the same thing. Why do I want to look at that website? Do they have five items last time? It doesn't matter. It's just like impulse buying, right? When I tell someone, oh, I have it at Gettysburg or, oh, I have it in storage. Dude, there's a good chance they're not going to Gettysburg. They're just going to go to eBay and buy it. So if I can't lock you in on that sale now, then it's, it, I'm wasting both of our times. Ursus Prime here. Yeah, man. What did, uh, can you That's explain? That's a concept drawing from Mark Taylor for the Master of the Universe. That's what Beastman was supposed to be. Wow. Yeah, so I we always have all these artwork and painting and stuff. And technically, since I changed my comic section from six foots to eight foots, I'm not going out and buying eight foots and having all these extra sixes. I was like, man, what cool little way every time we sell a painting. I, when I say this, this is not an exaggeration, there's probably 1,500 posters and frames of all kinds in the back room. How do you manage, like, all the stock? Like, I mean, do you know what's back there? I'm pretty OCD and I look a lot, but no, I don't know. I, we, we don't know. We were talking about I just got some cool Toxic Crusaders, and I was like, we were, I needed more of the uprights and stuff, and in the back room there's more. 
I was back there, I was moving boxes because I needed to dismantle it to use it. And I found a box of Toxic Crusaders and I was like, digging back in for myself. <laughs> Alan, if you were to have a store large enough to have everything that you've got in storage on the floor, what would you estimate the size you would need? Walmart. Uh, a medium, uh, uh, not a super size, like a normal Walmart. Wow. Yeah. Now, the true question is, and I think a part that a lot of people... The goal was to have the biggest shop, the biggest brand, like that home style feel, pack it the best, ship it all over the world. Da -da -da. If I could go back to my tiny town building, but with the same foot traffic I get in this area, I would do that a hundredfold. I absolutely miss being in a smaller location. That that I'll that I'll tell everybody. Just like we're doing toy shows, I love going to toy shows. If, okay, you want an economics lesson? If you think you're going to make money going to toy shows, you failed already. You already, you don't earn money at toy shows. I'll, I'll argue that with anyone. And if you're going to argue with me on it, you better have a shop to compare. Now, when you say that, do you mean do you mean on an individual show or even just on Any a season, show. so to if speak? You, let's, let's go season, right? If you average out your seasons, even if you do $5,000 in sales... Let's just say you paid twenty five hundred on it, right? Because in all reality, you pay fifty percent of whatever it's worth. Then you subtract all your expenses, and then if you have help there, if you whatever, you, okay, woo, you made three four hundred bucks for the weekend. For some people, that's great. It's not great when you've got to pay all the different taxes and the state stuff. And, and no, no, no. Shows are exposure. Shows are one hundred percent exposure. The goal for every show is to bring you back here. Come to our sales team. Watch our live sales. Watch our YouTube. Do that. That's all it is. Like, but I constantly, constantly, constantly fight with these guys. Prime example. Okay, say you're doing shows. We talked about this last time. You're doing mm -hmm. all these shows. If you're attending more than five shows a year and you're renting U-Hauls, again, you have no business doing a business. You, it, it, that ah, frustrates me. Gets me in a feisty. I, I just, and I want people, like, uh, I don't, again, I, I talk all the time, and I, I, I have one guy, I won't say his name because I don't think he wants people to know, but his shop was really struggling. And he was, he was like, man, every time I look, you're buying this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing That doesn't mean that we're not struggling, too. It just means we have a means on budgeting in order to keep up with what we need to, being ready for our slow times. Nick, you'd be the first one to tell me, I'm about to go buy something stupid at this t period of the year, and she'll say no because we don't know how next month might be. But um, I, I, I think there's a, a number of ways to be successful in toys, and I think there's a number of ways to fail in toys. And the number one way to fail in toys is going to all your Walmarts and Targets and buying all that inventory and making three, four dollars per and thinking that's gonna get you ahead. You gotta be willing to spend a little bit of money to make some money, buy in bulk. Don't buy anything individually. And that's why you have so much in storage because you're buying these huge collections. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't care. It could be great. It could be, it could be a AFA 80 Snake Eyes on card, beautiful. Unless I'm getting it for 40 to 30%, I have no interest. I would give you, I'll pay you a better, a bigger percentage on a bigger collection. I'm, I, no, I don't buy solo pieces. I, no, no. Because I guess what you can learn something every day. I learn something every day. If I see a shop that's doing something great or something's working good for them, there, there's no there's no pride in the way for me. I'll say, hey man, that was really cool. How you did that? How does that work? Or you know, when someone gets a new account with something, I'm like, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? Because in all reality, a lot of shops like myself, we should be 100% collaborating. For example, when I buy Mythics and I gotta buy it by the cases, I should have another shop that I split my cases with. And then in that shop has a Lego account, and they can split their cases with me. So that way, you're not out 30k, I'm not out 30k. Then we're doing it's it's stupidity. Why do you think they don't do that? Do you think it's just a simple the the, the competition? Guaranteed sales for them. You know how much extra work that would be cutting cases open, only sending three, only sending four. Yeah. No. You want to be a bowler? You got to buy the whole bottle of champagne. I reckon that explains my uh, achievements in Vegas. See what I'm saying? Like I, I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, zip ties, bro. I should have stock in zip ties. So when we were at Toy Palooza. You went through quite a few of them. How many would you? Uh... Probably average 600 a show. Wow. 
And how many then do you go through in the shop, like making these changes? Uh, thousands. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm you definitely should have stock. Yeah. Buy me. Buy me bones. Buy me bones. But I, man, I love changing the shop around, seeing what can be new and nice. I want to change the things up front. I hate those little rolling things, the wooden things up front. Hey, they don't look nice. I want, I want to do grid wall. Yep, I'm going to do grid wall so it can be more spread out, more nice. I'm like an OSHA, I'm like an OSHA warning sign. <laughs> Did you just hit your head on that? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, oh, there's no good coming of this. You got one foot on the ladder. Nikki is the manager of the store. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> on his uh, complete and absolute lack of safety? <laughs> no, it's not I'm my always, problem. No, no, no. Oh. Always, it's not my problem. I'm always, oh. I'm always safe. I'm safe. Nikki, I understand you're keeping Alan in line as you're trying to do this build out here. What, was, what, what, what happened there? Um, I, I told him to move that up because it, it, it just looks better in my opinion. Now we're fighting peg hooks to get into the holes and... He's like, no, no, we'll just do it this way, and then guess what? We're doing it this way now, the way I said it this time. See if it had just listened to you to begin with. Yeah, just move it up. Mm. Same thing like the, the comics. Just take out that middle shelf and problem solved. <laughs> so basically, Alan just needs to listen to you on a regular basis. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Problem solved. Right, right. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> do you hear that, Alan? All, all you have to all you have to do is listen to her from now on, and everything will be solved. That's what she said. Yeah. Got beers and bottle opener. Wait, the, what? Oh no my good. God! You didn't know what that would have been awesome. What is wrong? Well, did in you my just, defense, it's just a diet root beer. Did, did you did you just try to open the bottle with her booty cheeks? Yeah. That was. If it would have popped, like I'd been like, marry me now. If. if <laughs> If I can be honest, I, I probably, if, if it was my girlfriend, I probably would have done the same thing. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. Hey, you got to. Yeah. You know what the good thing about diet root beer? It still tastes like root beer. I was going to say that I could drink it. That was, yeah, that's what I brought you one. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Look at that. It's a sin to bring a beer and not give it to you. Well, it's, 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 it is root beer, folks. We're not drinking booze on the... But that'll just, be okay. It'll go down. But hey, yeah. It'll, it'll, be, it'll go down once you put the... Sit the rack on it. All right, then. I'll have it done tomorrow. Yeah. Tom, 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 just, just gotta add a few thousand bucks. Like I'll have everything the way it should be, and then they'll have to fill. Like they'll, they'll be the ones to fill. So like, another cool thing like her and I have picked up on this quick. So like when you're running your top, you have to get up, get down, get up, get down, get up, get down. But if you already, if you practice your length, like for example, I'll set my whole rim up like this. So then. I don't have to get up so much. And then when it's all ready, I can just get up on the ladder, show handy stuff, and we'll run the whole perimeter. It's just to get a show. Makes it faster. Do I need to? And this is how you roll with Attorney of Dreams. This is how, this is how we roll. This is how we roll. Remember that? Something like that. <laughs> what? It was a... Uh, at the end of the Fast and Furious, probably like number 35. It's like, that's how we roll. And like the credits are cut. Yeah. Oh, so that's how it is here. Yeah, same. Hmm. Push the mouse button, get it. 